Hey everybody, this is Kevin with nursingcamp.com and this is my Mastering Nursing School in the NCLEX. What you do in order to master your nursing school in your notes and how to look at that information and basically study and how we listen to lectures. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about ASLEEPS, which is a further exploration of the content that you're studying in class. So let's get into this video. Okay, nurse and tutor tips. Okay, this is video number three of seven, where I covered previously about four squares. We said that we always record lectures because our mind is gonna go in and out. And what we wanna do is we wanna separate this paper into four different parts. And how, how we basically isolate that, and we said that previously, now if a person's, if the, if the teacher's talking about a DVT, and I'm confident in what a DVT is and what it's about and everything like that, I will put a plus, right? But if I'm not sure about it, and if he starts talking about a PE, a pulmonary embolism, I'm not, I'm not really sure how he got from DVT to PE, so I would draw an arrow to that, okay? And then as a, as a teacher is talking, you want to listen to it for medications. Now medications come up, if the teacher talks about medications, you write them down and you start to build on it. So if they're talking about like a streptokinase, right? So streptokinase, and then you're like, okay, well they talked about that in relationship to that. I don't know what it is, so I'm gonna do a negative. And a negative means that, look it up later. All right, and then if there's diets, isolation precautions or precautions, like you might be talking about bleeding precautions, right? And they say, okay, well that's related to that. Right? We want to draw arrows to it. And then we said that at the end of the lecture, you sit down and say, well, what was the concept today? You know, the concept was about, you know, DVTs and PEs and, you know, and so forth and about perfusion, right? And that's what you want to do. So that's what the four squares is. Now, the second thing is, is as you listen to the four squares, you're listening to a lecture. So you're going to want to look at this and you want to isolate what you have. But what do you do with this content? That's the next step, which we talked about in the next one, where we said there's a burn list. And the burn list is usually in a brain book. Now, this brain book right here is basically just a bunch of things from this content over here. And as I'm writing it down, I'm basically transcribing it into this burn brain book. And this brain book is, is my, it's going to be a small book. You get these little books anywhere, like in the kind of craft store or even online or whatever, and you just put it in your pocket. And then when you're in clinical or you have some free time and everything like that, and you're looking on your phone, and then you basically study that content. And you want to generally want to put a, you know, a box next to it. Like if you're talking about that PE and you're like, then you start to watch videos on it and different things like that. Do you have a good concept of what it is? So how do I evaluate whether or not I know this content? So what we're gonna do is, is that we're gonna take DVT on the next section. All right, so when we're evaluating the content, we do a method called A-sleeps. And A-sleeps is basically how we're gonna look at the content. Do I know it? And can I teach it to somebody else? All right, so let's walk through a DVT, for example. So we have a DVT, right, which is basically um, a clot in the calf or something like that, right? So that's a basic DVT. So please see my DVT lecture on that. Okay, but anyways, so what do we do? Okay, well, the first thing we say, is a DVT acute or chronic? Okay, all right. Well, would you call the doctor if you had a DVT? Yes, okay. If a patient was on the floor, would you call up the doctor at two o'clock in the morning that they had a DVT, or would you wait till the morning when the doctor came in? Now you'd probably call the doctor up, right? So if it's a new onset DVT, yeah, I'd call the doctor. So that makes it acute, right? Does a patient, you know, long-term live with a DVT? No, a DVT is episodic. So that also makes it acute. So that's the first step of critical thinking, whether or not I truly understand it. If I can't define whether it's acute or chronic, I don't know it. So I need to study that content. And I have to study to the point that I can understand it and I can define whether it is acute or chronic. Now, what is a chronic thing? Like hypertension is chronic, right? Because hypertension leads towards stroke, right? Stroke is acute, but then stroke becomes post-stroke, which is chronic, okay? so. 
That's the big difference between acute and chronic. That's the first step. The second step is how does it start? Can I, this is my elevator pitch. Now, can I teach somebody, you know, how it starts? Can I talk about it? Do I understand it? And if I can't, that's a negative. That's a minus. So I need to study that content a little bit more clearly because I don't know how it starts. So I isolate what I don't know. So how does it start? Well, I mean, it's based on Virchow's triad. And Virchow's triad is three things that would cause a clot. Stasis, sitting in a bed, hypercoagulability, like AFib, or trauma, you know, like fat embolites, different things like that. Um, motor vehicle accidents, trauma, surgery, trauma, right? Can all cause DVTs. All right, next thing is, are there labs associated with it? Hmm, yeah, a D-dimer. A D-dimer is responsible for, you know, telling you that there's a DVT. Now, whether or not, you know, I mean, what happens in practice and what happens in the NCLEX is you always remember that when you're studying this content, you're studying it from the book and you're also studying it for the NCLEX, not what you're hearing on the floors because that's a little bit different. And remember, this is for nursing school and understanding about the content because when we talk about a D-dimer, it gets very convoluted out there because you know, whether or not they have an actual DVT, because they can have a positive D-dimer and not have a DVT. That's not important. Most important is most likely. Most likely it says that if you see D-dimer and you're in the NCLEX, that's DVT, that's PE, and that's it. And that's where it starts to get into, you know, I mean, that's a gray area, but the actuality is, is yeah, there is a lab associated with it, okay. Is eating affected by it? Not really, so I don't study that content, so I move on. What's the assessment before? What does it look like? Well, I mean, it's warm, it's painful to the touch. Um, you know, a lot of times there's a history. You know, the patient or the person was on a long plane ride or drove cross country, you know, so there's always this scenario before. What's the, what, what are they presenting during right now? Well, they have pain in calf, warmth, erythemia, ipsilateral pain. Okay, what about after? Well, the after is, well, I mean, if it's been done, you treated it, right? But what's the problem of it? And that's the other P over here. So what's some prescriptions for that? Well, some prescriptions are anticoagulants, right? So Lovenox, you know, heparin, um, clot busters, uh, and so on and so forth. So, you know, what is the prescriptions and where do we get this data from? Remember the four squares and all that stuff, right? So as we start to pull this content, that DVT, we have four squares, and then that starts to build our burn list. All right, so what's some problems of a DVT? Well, a PE, it results into a PE, okay? And that's an acute problem. And so that means that this is another concept, okay, PE. So then you go back up here, and if you're not sure what a PE is, you write a negative next to it, okay? So then what's the standout three? What's the three things that would make you run down the room with a patient with a DVT, you know? Well, the patient is post-op and, you know, suddenly has shortness of breath. Holy crap, you know, that DVT has migrated. Uh, the patient has new onset calf pain, ipsilateral pain, warmthness, redness. Um, or the patient's on anticoagulants and is bleeding, you know, because of the... So that's what A-sleeps is. A-sleeps is a method that you do for content. Remember the four squares? Things that are in the content will all get an A-sleeps. So quickly on a PE, is it acute or chronic? Acute. How does it start? Well, it comes from a DVT. Oh, but Kevin, some people can get a flash PE. Nope. Most likely DVT to PE. Okay. Labs associated with same thing, D-dimers, right? Also a spiral CT shows that. Um, eating affected, not really, don't care. Assessment before, well, they probably had a DVT, now it became a PE. Any prescriptions with a PE, same as a DVT. What's the problems with the PE? Well, holy crap, they can't breathe. That's a big issue, you know, so airways priority. And what's the three things with the PE? Well, decreased SATs, Increased shortness of breath, bleeding is another problem. And that's a PE going through A sleeps.
So there you go. There's the next part. And the next thing we're going to talk about in the next lecture is called a whales. When we look at medications and what you need to know and how do you isolate. Now, a sleeps is very important because when you are getting together as a group and you're studying with one another, you say to each other, you know, somebody's like, okay, well, you know, PE, you know, give me, give me your a sleeps on PE. Do you know it? And, and then you should all be able to say the same thing. And you should all be able to, and that's going to be isolating what's most likely you will be tested on with the content of a DVT or a PE. And that's what this ASLEEPS does. It isolates the most important content that you need to know about this condition. So see you on the next video where we talk about A-Whales.